why don't we have a race? Everybody grab your own guinea pig, get a piece of spinach each, right? And we'll see who's the fastest spinach eater in the West here, okay? In Richmond, just across the road from Scott's practice, sisters Ruby, Olivia and Jasmine, plus dad Kevin, are enjoying time with their much-loved guinea pigs. I think the spinach is better than the, the corn. Winner! <laughs> Ruby was given two-year-old Maple as a birthday present, but recently there's been a huge lump growing on her guinea pig's body. I'm quite scared. I love Maple so much. She, she's just wonderful. I didn't really think that guinea pigs would be, like, a nice animal because I thought that they were, like, rough and hairy, but they're actually really soft and really nice and cute. <laughs> <laughs> the three amigos are ready, eh? OK, shall we go? So all the girls and Dad are heading over to the practice to find out just what Scott will recommend. Ruby's a tough character. She loves maple, and she'll take the good with the bad. Obviously, we'd like to see the good more than the bad, but uh, I think she's prepared for it if it's not good. Hello, girls. Lots and lots of girls all together oh, in yeah. a pink bag. So it's very suitable, isn't it? Maple's yours, isn't she, Ruby? All right. Well, I'll grab beautiful maple, so yeah. you two follow me. You two okay. grab a seat. All right, okay. we'll go and have a chat. Radio. I absolutely adore the family. They're so wonderful, and it's always great to see them. Unfortunately, this time around, it's under relatively sad circumstances. All right, well, let's have a look at your beautiful girl. She's got those incredible albino eyes, isn't she? Ruby red eyes for a ruby red mum. But straight away, I can feel that lump. Have you seen that growing? Yeah. And quite quickly, hey? Yeah. Yeah. And if you think of how big that is versus how big your guinea pig is, you know, if you then turned that into me, I'd probably be like a rugby ball size on my body. How are you feeling about all of that? I'm really worried. I think it's the right thing mm. to remove yeah. this because if it gets any bigger, I won't be able to close it back together yeah. again. It's almost like dressmaking, really. When you take a section of material away, you need to be able to close it, otherwise you can't wear the dress. Scott's so worried about the aggressive growth of the lump that he's booking Maple in for surgery later today. This lump has grown quite large in a short space of time. When that happens in animals, that's a red flag, that's a concern. It could be cancer. Also heading to the Richmond practice is Texan-born Molly and another American import, Smitty. Hey, Scott. Morning, Molly. Morning, morning, Smitty. Jump in a on few the scales weeks, there. Molly is planning to fly home to the States for Christmas, but she's worried the trip may have to be postponed because Smitty's having trouble with one of his back legs. Hey, did I spy him skipping you did. on the way in? You did. It's getting worse. The first time I noticed something was really wrong, I was at the park with Smitty, and all of a sudden he was uh, limping on his back right leg. First, we'd like to just see him have a little walk, if that's sure. okay. Come on. Yeah, he's really holding his leg out, Molly. Yeah. It's clear that Smitty's knee is getting worse, and that is a really hard thought, because I just hate the idea of having him feel pain. All right, little man, let's, let's have a look at you. Hello, buddy. Hello, sweetheart. You okay? He is such a good boy. He's always he really such a good is. little dog. A real sweetheart. Now, what I'm going to do now is just have a little feel of this knee and just see if we can see the, yeah, look, you can see that knee popping in and then, boop. Yeah. Pops in and it pops out. And it's actually now living out of yeah. the groove more often than it's living in. Right. It is not even trying to stay where it's supposed to stay. Okay. So that's why that you've seen the progression of the clinical signs, the skipping. We'll see more rubbing, we'll see more arthritic change, and those things I can't reverse. But what we can do right now, if you're feeling brave, is actually perform a surgery so that the kneecap no longer pops out. Okay. And that we stop the progression of the arthritis here. If we didn't perform surgery on Smitty, he would slowly but surely develop more and more arthritis in that joint. It would become more painful, it would seize up, and eventually he may not even be able to use the leg. I know it needs to be done. I hate to put him through it just because I don't see visible pain, but I do see that it's getting worse. So I'm ready to, to, to do it. Oh, little guy. It's okay, right. little buddy. 
Molly's obviously apprehensive at putting poor little Smitty through surgery. Fair enough, it's a big procedure we're gonna to have to do, but it has really important long-term benefits. And I think it's a case of a short-term pain for a long-term gain. Okay, champ. You. You're coming with me now, my friend. That's a good boy. Oh, oh my, I know. You're gonna miss your mummy, aren't you? All right. Bye, buddy. Say bye, mummy. Bye, Smitty. Say see ya. No more skipping for you. Bye, Smitter. On, Maple. Here's the birthday boy. Oh, excellent. She got me a birthday present then. Yeah, guinea pig. <laughs> How you feel, mate? Happy birthday. It's Thank Nurse you. Nathan's so special day, but it's also remove. a big occasion for Maple. It's a fairly substantial mass. Scott's about to remove a suspicious looking lump from the little guinea pig. And it's growing quite quickly and in quite a short space of time, and, and that's what worries me massively, but for now we just need to do one step at a time. So first thing is anaesthetic. So I'll give you a little bit of gas, gorgeous, okay? And I'll get this nasty lump off you, yeah? Good girl, all right. So while she's going down, I think we'll just put on the obligatory guinea pig booties. What do you reckon? Definitely yeah? a little bit of space booting. It's, uh... So what I'm doing right now is just insulating little Maple's feet, guinea pigs have a really fast metabolic rate, and that means that they lose heat very easily as well. So what we're doing is putting on these little, well, bubble shoes, we'll call them, and it just helps to avoid her losing as much uh, temperature as possible from her feet. Right, there we go, so footwear done. Okay, now for the main event. As soon as Scott shaves the area, the full size of the lump is revealed. Okay, well, unmasked is more horrifying, really, isn't it? I mean, it's huge. Definitely get that off you, sweetheart. I don't like the look of that at all. I told Ruby that this surgery was going to be difficult. This lump really is massive, even bigger than I thought it was going to be once all the hair has been removed, and it's going to prove more of a challenge. So now it's about taking enough of the lump and the surrounding tissue away that it's a curative result so that we've removed everything we need to but still being able to close it. And that's the, the tricky bit. Okay, and that is that. Can wake up? Here she comes. Here we go. Hello, baby girl. It was a quick wake up, wasn't it? Hey, you want to get back home to mummy? Hmm? Yeah. Girl. Hi, guys. Soon after, Scott delivers Maple Good. back to her family, waiting patiently upstairs. Oh, yeah. So there's the there's oh, where I had to take it away. At least it's out and it's together. Yeah. Fantastic. So it would look a lot worse if we couldn't close it, but we've been able to, oh, so that's fantastic. good. Now you need to make sure you give her lots of love and cuddles tonight. You can all do that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Scott. Oh, you're welcome, sweetheart. You're always welcome. Now the family will have to wait for the lab results to find out whether Maple's lump is cancerous or benign. I'm just really hopeful, maybe just being a big softy, that as it's Nathan, my nurse's birthday today, that maybe a little bit of that birthday good luck will be sprinkled across Maple. Happy birthday to you. And the lump will come back as something we shouldn't be concerned about. Hey! Today I'm on a beautiful drive out the countryside to see one of my favourite people in the world, Jill, who runs the Border Collie Spot. She's given me a call because she's just received two beautiful Border Collie puppies, so she wants me to have a look at them and of course when Jill gives me a call I come running because I love this lady. Jill is a saint. Curly! Curly! She literally saves hundreds of Border Collies in the UK every year. Border Collies are my favourite breed. I love their intelligence, their loyalty, their real friends. I mainly take dogs from farms that are neglected, uh, unwanted, abused. Hopefully I can help them and uh, give them a better life. Good boy. Hello, gorgeous Jill. Hi, Scott. How are you, lovely lady? I'm fine, thank you. Mwah, yeah. So who is this? This is Mia. Hello, Mia. Aren't you a pretty girl? And this is her little brother, Ted. Jill's two new rescue cases are seven-month-old siblings. 
Ted and Mia were found emaciated and riddled with worms. But it's the little boy's lame back legs that are Jill's main concern. Such sad, sad dogs arrive here sometimes. And although sometimes it takes a long time, it's wonderful to see them recovering and the light coming back into their eyes. That's, I suppose, why I keep doing it. OK, Jill, so I need to see your little boy do a bit of walking. Okay. So do you want to walk over yeah. that way? Come on, Ted. Come on then, Ted. Come on. Good boy. Mm, it's not normal, not normal at all. It's very stiff on that back leg, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's not right, is it? It really is a very concerning moment when a young dog is lame and limping on a hip that should be completely healthy. They should be bounding around and he isn't. And that really worries me for his future. Okay, I'm just gonna extend this hip here. Yeah. Good boy. There's definitely something going on in this left hip. Yeah. Uh, there's a bit of clicking. He definitely resents me extending yeah. that hip. Ooh, oh, does good. it hurt a little bit? Hey? For a young dog of his age, you know, he should have very flexible, very mobile hips, and uh, and this one, there's definitely some tightness. So I think yeah. that's probably the cause for his lameness at the moment. It's painful. He can't fully extend it. And in the worst case scenario, it could be something like hip dysplasia, where the hip just falls out of the socket. So what I think we need to do is take this young man to go and see my mate Michael, the orthopedic surgeon, um, get him to have a little look. Yeah. We'll do some examinations, likely x-rays, and look a little bit deeper into what the problems are. Well, as long as we can do something. Yeah, That's... here we are again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The news Scott usually brings to me <laughs> is that something is going to need major surgery and cost thousands of pounds that we haven't got. <laughs> but even so, we always manage to find it. So no dog ever goes without treatment if it needs it. OK. Get you into the car, eh? Go see Michael. Ted's been through so much, had such a terrible start to his life. Say bye, Jill. Hey. Hi, Ted. Good boy. And hopefully, if we get some good news today, he'll get into a loving home of his own. That's it. Lovely. Bye. Good boy. Bye. <laughs> Here you, monkey. 45 miles away in Chertsey, these two puppies clearly don't have a care in the world. Scully belongs to Scott and his wife Zoe, and Branston is the pride and joy of Zoe's <laughs> sister Maz. Maz, if your dog's going to be this out of control, we can't really do training. Branson. Today, the pups boy, are learning sit. some new sit. tricks. Sit. Good boy. Oh, very good. Okay, we can match. Okay, the there we go. There we go. Scully, there we go. come. And sibling rivalry is breaking out about whose is the smartest. Shake. Good girl. So the plan today is a bit of training in the garden with the two puppies. And yeah, truthfully, see who's better. <laughs> Scully, come. Come, sit. No, Branny, you're ruining it. No, 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 that's cheating, that's cheating. Sabotage, sabotage. <laughs> the pups have come a long way since Scott delivered them both by emergency caesarean. Good boy, stand. But now the lively pups are thriving. Good oh, boy! Good, good boy! Good. Well done! And it's hard to tell which mum is the proudest. Hats off, which she can also do. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be unfair for me to say that one puppy's better than the other or anything like that. Up. Good puppy! Oh, she's a puppy. Oh, she's a But that's, you know, mainly because I think it was quite obvious that Branston... Turn around. He's just streets ahead on the training front, really. Almost! <laughs> <laughs> Sit. Sit. <laughs> I don't want to say this, but I think we know Scully was a little bit better. Watch this. Wait, Scully. Wait, Branston. Wait. Wait. Branston. Come here. No! Oh, that doesn't count. Champion. No, that's not Champion. right. The best I'm prepared to accept is a draw. All right, that's interesting. They're both fair. doing well. Yeah. All right. You're definitely the best. You're the best. Yes, you are. Let's go see Michael. Good boy. Near Marlow in Buckinghamshire, 
Scott has arrived to ask orthopaedic specialist surgeon Michael Hamilton to check out Ted the rescue pup. I know, it's a Geordie, I know. It is a bit off-putting. Come on. But the seven-month-old is definitely nervous about seeing his second vet of the day. Come on, in you come. Come on. Oh, you're going to make me carry you, aren't you? Come here. Come on. Come on. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Good to see you. And you, nice and you. So yeah. this is Ted. Yeah. Um, he's from Ireland. How's your mm -hmm. Irish accent? <laughs> poor. Yeah. Poor. Yeah. Fairly poor. Me too. Me too. <laughs> uh, I can drink a Guinness and that's about it. This guy, he is walking quite oddly on his back leg, on his back left. <laughs> Today is a massive crossroads for Ted's life. It could just be that he has a slightly tight hip that's a muscular issue that will resolve with physiotherapy or hydrotherapy. <laughs> He's getting a bit tense there. Or it could be as bad as a hip needing a total hip replacement. There's a massive spectrum there. We need to find out where on that spectrum he is. Right, OK. Right, Come mate, on, Ted. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, go on, for Ted. a run. Go Good on, boy. Come on, then. To further assess Ted's hips, Michael needs to put him through his paces. Good boy. That's it. So the reason we've come out here is we need to see him at a faster speed and ideally in a nice straight line. And this, this went perfectly. It's little run runway number one. Keep going. Good boy. Yeah. Good boy. Go on, keep going, Scotty. Take good boy. <laughs> and a bit quicker. Good boy. Come Hope on, you don't Ted. find anything wrong with me. Go on, Ted. <laughs> he's got what I call the supermodel swagger. So as he moves, rather than kind of pulling his hip through, he swings his whole pelvis forward. So he goes, he kind of walks like he's got a pair of Christian Louboutins on. Let's x raise hips. Let's see how good or bad his hips actually are. Ted's swagger could be the result of poor diet or a lack of exercise, but the main reason why young dogs like him walk like he does is a condition called hip dysplasia. That's where the ball literally falls out of the hip socket joint over time, and that causes painful rubbing of the joint. X-rays. If that's the case, Ted could need a total hip replacement. Now that's major surgery requiring weeks of rehab. These x-rays will give Michael and Scott the answers and decide Ted's future. So this is an x-ray of, of his hips. So these are the, the balls of the ball and socket joints. The balls are basically sitting quite well in the sockets. Yeah, I mean, his hips are actually pretty good. I guess he could still snatch the feet from the jaws of victory, but, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty good. So I'm, I'm really glad we did that. I can only assume that some of his muscles and some of the soft tissues are just tight. Probably because he's had no exercise, he's had a poor diet, etc. But from a surgical perspective, there's, there's nothing for me to do. There's nothing, no tendons to cut, no joints to replace, no, no broken bones to fix. So um, I think he's going to be fine. I think he's going to be fine. I'd be very surprised now, based on that x-ray, if he needs any intervention ever. Uh, right. so, so that's really wow. good news for him. As he just does more and more exercise and becomes more and more of an athlete and gets a good diet, he's going to be normal. Hello. It was a good little wake up, wasn't it? Hey, lots of good news to tell you. I think it's great news for Jill today. I think it's the chance that she can now find a forever home for this beautiful little dog, give him the future that he's looking for, and we'll keep a close eye on him to make sure that he does reach his full potential. All right then, mate, well, thanks very much. No problem. Yeah, Ted yeah. says thanks very much. Yeah. While Ted is still looking distinctly worried. Yeah, go see you, mate. See ya. Take All care. Best, yeah. Bye. Scott can't wait to deliver the shy puppy back to Jill and give her the news she's been hoping for. Good so boy. it's Aww. rare, Jill, mm -hmm. that I get to speak to you about good news. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. The x-rays actually show that his hips are relatively good. I was really nervous about what you were going to be saying to me. So it's, it's really good news, isn't it? So I think what we need to do is to allow him to grow, but also in an environment which is healthy, which is going to get good food, therefore yeah. good nutrition, and also exercise, which is absolutely key to develop physically as he should. Yeah. And my hope is, is that the lameness that he's showing at the moment will come right once he's just using his body the way it was intended. Scott has given me the most amazing news. It is just a case of bad nutrition uh, and neglect. So with care and love, he should recover well and hopefully be rehomed soon. I think if he was one of the seven dwarfs, this guy, I wonder if he'd be, would he be dopey or sleepy? <laughs> 
Don't say that. He'll never get home. <laughs> Good luck finding that new home, mate. You deserve it. Good boy. Yeah. Good boy. You love me, don't you? You love me. Here you are. Yeah. <laughs> off for a sec. At Richmond, nurses Emma and Nathan are preparing little Smitty for surgery. Let's just move him up a little bit. One, two, three. His kneecap has been popping in and out of position, causing pain in the joint and making him limp. Now, Scott needs to fix the kneecap back into its groove to prevent arthritis setting into the joint. I've just got Smitty on the table and I'm just really hoping that the knee looks okay when I get in there. I'm really hoping I won't see arthritic change, which would have a massive impact on his future. It's great news for Smitty because it means now he shouldn't skip or limp anymore. There shouldn't be any rubbing causing further arthritic change. Good result. Well done. Hopefully Molly will be happy. To be able to say to a worried owner, your dog's fine and he's gonna live a pain-free existence, perfect. Oh, you're doing okay. It was a little heartbreaking seeing Smitty drugged up, bandaged up, clearly not himself. Pulls at the heartstrings for me, but I'm really anxious to get him home. Any damage on the bone that was made by the rubbing? Absolutely none. Really? Yeah, absolutely Yay. none. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. It was so oh, I'm smooth. so glad I did this when I did. So that's it really good. does mean So it's just it. full recovery. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's what we've got to look forward to. Is Great. Smitty will need to stay in overnight for observation. You're OK. But Scott's confident that he'll recover quickly enough for that flight back home to Texas. I think it's great that we've done this before you go so that yeah. you can settle into a new life in Texas. Yeah. Um, and fingers crossed you won't need me anymore. I know. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Let's hope. All right. Well, that's just great news. I'm very happy. Yeah. With Christmas fast approaching, Scott's been asked to do a favour for the owners of an animal farm in South Yorkshire. I'm driving out today to see Andy and Keeley, who run the Mayfield Alpacas Animal Park. And recently they asked me to pop up to help with their Randy meerkat, Nguvu. Now this time it's not meerkats or alpacas even that are causing the problems, but a creature much more associated with Christmas. So I just hope that I can help. Come on, Spinny. Come on, good boy. There you go. Good lad. Hi, guys. Hi, yeah. How are you doing? Hey, Keely, good to see you. Yeah, you too. Nice hey, to meet you. Hi, Andy. Hi. So you've dragged me all the way back up to Yorkshire for reindeer. So yeah. tell me exactly what I'm doing today. Uh, this is Sven, so he's our male reindeer. Um, and then we've got Elsa over there, but it's Sven that I really want you to look at today. Scott's here today to help us trim the feet of a reindeer. So our reindeer feet, they do continually grow, so sometimes they splay out and then they can crack, so Sven's feet are looking like they do need doing. He does need a Christmas pedicure, because he does have to look nice and sparkly, <laughs> ready for his crowd. <laughs> Sven's quite feisty, so yeah, he'll have his work cut out for him. <laughs> Let's just say they've got some Christmas spirit in them. Uh, we'll say that for the minimum. It looks like a pussycat. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure yeah, if elves can do it, good. you can do it. If elves can do it, yeah. I can do it. <laughs> there we go. Kinley and Andy, you're playing it a bit cagey about how friendly or not the reindeer are. But look, it's Rudolph. What have I got to worry about? If you just come through this way. In order to trim Sven's feet, they'll need to move him to the barn, where he'll be easier to control. Let's go, come on. <laughs> Scott will need to get hold of his long lead and reel him in. Oh, and they're off already. Oh, my goodness. Scott, I'll give you those. Just in case. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Scott looks a little bit nervous. Come on, Sven. But Scott's a big Aussie guy. I'm sure that he can deal with the sort of power that's behind a small reindeer. It's nothing compared to a kangaroo or a great white shark. So close. So close. We usually try and step on the lead rope and then reel them in from there. Scott's method seems to be diving on the lead rope. I was so close. Honestly, I had it. Not a method that we usually use and not one I've seen before. It's 
comedy for us. We quite enjoy watching it. <laughs> Crap, are you kidding? Definitely the reindeers are winning. <laughs> oh my god. It doesn't look like he's going to give up, though. Got him! Keep up, keep up, keep up. <laughs> Feel him in. Come on, mate. Oh, man. Come on, Sven. Come on. Keep nice and calm with him. Good and boy. Just be careful as you're getting close to you. Good boy. The reindeers, they use their feet to kick and they also use their antlers to headbutt you as well. Yeah, try and hold as close up to the head collar as possible and then keep to the side of him. Just okay, so actually just... try and grab his head collar? Uh, yeah. Just underneath you, where the buckle is. Okay. And then you should be able to start walking Okay, him. Sven. That's it. Good boy. Good Perfect. boy. Perfect. And then so you're at the side of him, both hands on the lead rope. Okay. Okay. Good boy. That's it. There yeah. we go, let's be friends. That's it, you've done it. But catching Sven is just the beginning. Good boy. Now Scott needs to walk Sven into the barn. Oh yeah! Oh. But the young male is not surrendering without a fight. I think the adrenaline's pumping in Scott. He is doing a good job. He's doing the right movements. He's talking to the reindeer. Come on, come on. Let's behave nicely now. I think the competition's on now to see who can hold on to who. Whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Do you know that Scully and her mummy and daddy and all her brothers and sisters are going to have dun 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 a puppy Christmas party? Really? Back in London at the Miller House, Zoe is planning Scully's first Christmas party. Not just any puppy Yay! party, puppy Christmas party. Puppy Christmas party. Scott helped bring Scully and her two brothers and three sisters into the world. And now he and Zoe have invited them all to a special get-together at the Richmond practice. Daddy, you look adorable! I think it's going to be jam-packed at the practice when we get there. You think there's going to be me, Scott and the kids just coming with Scully and then there's another five puppies and everybody that goes with that. Who will be more excited, the puppies or the people? I don't know. I think maybe the people might be the loudest. <laughs> Today, Zoe is kicking off the festive spirit with the help of Summer, Quinn and Jackson. Yay! High five! Scott's off wrangling reindeer, getting Christmas on in a very real way, and we're here at home. Excuse me, Mummy. Can you imagine how much the kids would love seeing a real-life Rudolph? That would be amazing! So we thought we'd start things here, start decorating the tree, get our Christmas on with the help of my three little elves. It's looking good, kids. Wow, this is going to be a great Christmas! <laughs> He'll have a rest and then he'll have a fight, he'll have a rest, he'll have a fight. At Sheffield, Scott's been asked by Keely and Andy to do a foot trim on their Norwegian reindeer Sven. Let's behave nicely now. But just getting him to the barn for the pedicure is proving to be a massive challenge. Calm down, come on. Even though it does look a bit of a stressful experience, probably for all involved, not just the reindeer, it's something necessary that they need doing. So as the feet do get longer and they do become splayed and cracked, that can cause infection and pain as well. We try and do it as quickly and efficiently as possible, even if it does look a bit manic. Come on, Sanders waiting. Honestly, it is like trying to dance with a big, massive reindeer. He keeps spinning me round and round in circles. He's bucking. Not much further. It's an absolute nightmare. It'll just be a bit of a dance on the way up there. <laughs> yeah. It's funny to watch someone else going through that. Usually I'm the cannon fodder, but it's all practice. At least he'll have a good dancing skill at the end of it. <laughs> I'm not thinking it's ballroom, <laughs> no. or if it is. I think it is. It's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> now I know how Santa feels. It's so exhausting. <laughs> 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 Nearly there. Come on, mate. We're nearly at the barn, and honestly, I can't wait to let go of the halter. He's a beautiful reindeer, but I think we need to spend some time apart. Wait! Oh. Come. Almost. Sven will now be given some quiet okay. time okay. in the barn All to right. let him relax before the foot hey. trip. Can you reverse park? Hey? Here we are. Oh. Oh. Break, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. 
Back in Sheffield, the recalcitrant two-year-old Sven has settled down enough for Scott to start his Christmas pedicure. Hello, uh, mate. He actually looks a lot happier. He does, much calmer, yeah. breathing much more slowly and relaxed. That's yeah. good. Scott's reindeer initiation has already been a revelation. So close. Honestly, I had it. But Sven's owners, Keely and Andy, are hoping it will all be smooth sailing from here. Pedicure of a reindeer. Mm. I'm getting nervous <laughs> again. He looks quite happy now. He does look pretty chilled so. now, but I've learned my lesson from last time. <laughs> <laughs> I am sending Andy in first. It does seem to like to go in there and get involved. I know, I know. This could potentially be quite a dangerous situation. Steady, steady. So, as always, I'm used as cannon fodder. We've got not only antlers, you've also got the ability for the animals to kick, not from just from the front, but from the back. And they're not like other animals. They can kick to the side, they can jump and act as they go for your face. Ah, no. It's definitely a hard task ahead. Luckily, Scott's on hand in order to try and uh, sedate him if we need it. Whenever we use sedation in animals, it's always coming at a risk. And for a big animal like him, we need to use quite a high volume. So if we can do it without the use of drugs, it's a much healthier thing to do. After some serious push and shove, it's success for Andy and his assistant, Nick. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's going in. Yeah. And Scott can finally start on Sven's pedicure. That's actually a really good position. <laughs> so I'm at the front and we've got Nick at the back. And this point, all I'm concerned with is keeping the head down. Nick will keep his back end down and we should be safe. How you going there, Nick? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for any sort of movements. If the animal feels that you are relaxed in any way, shape or form, he'll take advantage of that and he'll jump up. What's so incredible, Keely? Straight away I see he's got four toes. Yeah, so they were uh, like snowshoes then. Yeah, um, so what, they the sort snow. of splay out on the snow. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Well, it does a really good job. <laughs> All right, so how much of this? I can feel it's very thin there. Reindeers in the natural environment will wear down their feet by walking on rocky surfaces. When they're in a paddock, of course, the hooves are going to continue to grow, and that's why they need trimming. It is dead keratin, so it's not going to hurt, eh? Hey? Okay, mate. Happy better. with that? Yeah. All right. Very happy. Okay. Nice, although what I'm concerned about now is I've sharpened it up quite a lot for next time. <laughs> it's got points. <laughs> yeah, it's got points. So, Keely, how's my first Hey, that's good, that. That reindeer. is good, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> nice and smooth around, a lot shorter. Wow. Coat with underneath. Maybe, yeah, I've, um, maybe I've missed my yeah. vacation. <laughs> <laughs> reindeer nail clipping. <laughs> Nails by Dr. Scott. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Available only at Christmas. <laughs> I think Sven's going to have a really good Christmas now. His toenails, they look really nice. He'll be ready to step out at Christmas, greet his crowds. Good luck, Sven. Hey, I hope that Elsa's impressed with your new footwork. Have a good Christmas. <laughs> this isn't my first trip up to Sheffield, and I don't know what it is about the animals up here, but I still don't think I'm any closer to making friends with them. I'm definitely not on Sven's Christmas card list. Oh, hello. That sounds like Smitty. <laughs> hello. Hello. Back in London, Scott is making a <laughs> Skype call to Texas. Hi, mate. Smitty recovered quickly enough from his knee operation for Molly to get back home for Christmas. Who is that, Dr. Scott? Is that Dr. Scott? Don't worry. He can't do anything. <laughs> Luckily, scalpels don't go via Skype. Fine. That's right, that's right. But he's just, he's a happy, happy little dog and he's doing phenomenal. I think he likes being back in Texas. It's so lovely to see Molly again, even if it is just through a screen, but Smitty seems to be walking really well on that knee. Life in Texas seems to be really agreeing with him. I've forgotten how beautiful he looks. You know what he looks a little bit like? A baby seal, I think. He's got those yeah. beautiful big brown eyes, doesn't he? He does, <laughs> doesn't he? When he gets those eyes going when he wants something. Smitty. 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 Hey, mate. <laughs> oh, wait oh, a minute. Oh, my goodness. Normally, as a vet, you get to see your patient over and over again. But in this case, Smitty was jetting all the way back to Texas with Molly. But I'm hoping they're going to have a fantastic and very comfortable Christmas now and many more to come. 
All right, Molly, lots of love. All right, thank Take you. Take care. Yeah, have a great Christmas, Smitty. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye. Ready, Teddy? You want to spin? Good boy. As for Ted, all his Christmases have come early. He's found the perfect forever home with Border Collie lovers Dorian and Kim and their other rescue dog, Kenny. Oh, good boy. Good boy. He's very fast. You're very fast, aren't you, mate? Ted was found starving and struggling to walk properly. But once Scott and Michael cleared the puppy of hip dysplasia... Uh, so, so that's really good news for him. Spin. It just took the right diet and care to transform him from a sad, quiet border collie to this happy boy. Whoa! Good Look lad. Good boy. Now Ted's repaying that debt by helping heal his new owner. Kenny and Ted have helped me in a way that I cannot explain. They are, oh, that's special. They're my little boys. Three years ago, Dorian lost his eldest son, Connor, after the 21-year-old had a tragic fall from a balcony. It, it happened. Every family's worst nightmare, it, it happened. And Kenny was actually born three days after Connor died. And it was like, wow, you know, it was just one of those things that we had to, um, we had to get him. Good boys. First Kenny and now Ted have been helping Dorian through his profound grief. And then I'll have five minutes walking my dog. Big bold bloke with a beard, crying over there with a dog. You know, but hey, they don't know, do they? But uh, I carry on, you know, and it's, I look at my dogs and we, I just smile sometimes and get on with it, which you've got to do. You've got to do that. Teddy? Good boy, there you go. Uh, another one? How many is that? Three? Another one? Four? It's been a long journey for both Ted and Dorian, <laughs> oh but this Christmas promises Ted? to be a very happy one for them all. Good boy, Ted. My advice to anybody that wants a dog is to go out and get one. <laughs> oh, very clever. You'll love it. You'll love it. It's life-changing. It's life-saving for so many people. You clever? Yes, you are clever. I know you're clever. I love you too, mate. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. It's a shame though it's not night time. I think you'd get the real twinkle. Just down the road from Scott's practice in Richmond, everyone's starting to get into the Christmas spirit. It'd be cute if we had a, a ball that you could hang from the tree. <laughs> the three sisters, Olivia, Ruby and Jasmine, their mum Jeanette and the three family guinea pigs. She could be a decoration. She could be she could be the angel on the top of the tree. We could give them stockings for Christmas. We could put them up with like spinach or something. Despite all the excitement about the upcoming festive season, there's been a shadow hanging over this close-knit clan. Scott removed an enormous lump from Ruby's guinea pig maple and sent it off to be tested. It really is absolutely huge. Hello, Hello Merry Hello, Christmas. Scott. Now he's dropping by to deliver the results. You? Thank you. Such a big lump. You worry with something growing so rapidly as to what it could be, and knowing how attached Ruby was to her animal, you don't need anything awful to go wrong. Let me have a little look at your beautiful girl. Hello, sweetheart. How are you? Very good news, young lady, in time for Christmas, is that the lump came back as something called a trichoepithelioma. It sounds awful, but in fact, uh, it's a benign tumour, nothing to worry about. And by removing it completely, it won't come back. Thank you so much, Scott. No worries. I thought I was going to lose her, but... Oh, sweetheart, no. Mm. No way, no chance. Not before Christmas. That would be awful, wouldn't it? Yeah. Hey? When Scott said that it was benign, I was just absolutely so grateful. She can enjoy many more Christmases with you guys in this yeah. phenomenal tree. I can't believe it. That's <laughs> massive. I could climb it. <laughs> oh, actually, actually, I'm glad you said that. Oh, really? <laughs> because we we couldn't put the angel on top of the Christmas oh, tree. Oh, <laughs> wow. OK. Gosh. All right. I'm going to need a ladder. <laughs> oh, man, that's going to be a stretch. Wait a minute. Oh, oh. There you go. How's How's that? No, oh, no now she's just with her leg on her oh, back and she's looking okay. down. You're a hard taskmaster, I tell you, Jenny. A little no? bit to the left, just rotate. How's that? I think that's pretty good. Yeah. That's Yay!
avoid them around the bottom too much because we've got six very excitable puppies <laughs> who will try and eat them. Right, Back so. at the Richmond practice, oh, Zoe and Maz are in charge of the final preparations for Scully's first Christmas party. I'm starting to think that this puppy party might be our craziest idea yet. All Scully's five siblings have been invited. Come on, love. Come on, Mike. As well as her proud parents, Bonnie and Sebastian. So amazing. They all look so similar now, don't they? I'm really excited to see all the puppies again because it was just such a massive event. They were born just downstairs here at the practice, so to have them all return with their new owners is just so special. Ooh, what could it be, dogs? What could it be? Oh, my God! <laughs> It's, it's <laughs> the whole family. Yes. I think it'll make Bonnie's Christmas to know that all the dogs are in good homes and they're happy. They're all with owners who love them. And they're all lively and energetic and clever and sweet. Can I have a kiss? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Lovely Christmas kisses. To see all the puppies together is just fantastic. And it's definitely given Christmas the sparkle, without a doubt. Thank you so much for coming. It's such a joyous thing to spend this moment with you guys. We've now all become this big, massive, happy, extended family. It's very, very special to me, and I just want to say thank you so much, um, and uh, a Merry Christmas to you all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.